Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I have half an hour to try to save the world. <laughs> I heard yesterday evening, uh, yesterday afternoon, that I was invited to give this uh, short lecture. And it's a very simple subject, what went wrong within the N NSA? And uh, I can tell you, I don't have wear a bulletproof. This is my own belly, which is maybe also a bulletproof, but <laughs> It is, uh, I'm a scientist, so what I'm going to say is most, mostly based on facts, based on discussions with the whistleblowers who went out of NSA after they tried to warn the, warn the, manis, uh, the management that some things were going in the wrong direction, and then they had to go out and uh, tell the world about it. And that's the things I then heard is uh, I'm going to tell you. Now, what is the matter? We even found a chair with GCHQ down in the hall, in the lecture hall <laughs> downstairs. Yeah. yeah, you have to watch carefully around you. So there was a special chair uh, was reserved for one of the guys who is from the Secret Services here uh, present. And so we already arranged that it would be. Oh, it's not only the NSA, it's also the FBI. GCHQ is the English listening service. And they all have been established in the 40s during the Second World War and have combined into uh, Echelon, a big worldwide network to listen into phone conversations, telephone conversations in the Commonwealth. So they co were co also called the Five Eyes, which uh, is the Commonwealth nations, and also Australia and New Zealand. And you have, of course, they cooperate with the German version, with the Dutch version. They all deny that they do things together, but sometimes they, they say, no, 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 we don't listen to American citizens. Well, the English do that for them. And, and, and just the other way around. So it's all a lot of bullshit that they say, no, no, we, we strictly apply to the law and the constitution while they break every law and all constitutional rules to do what they are doing. So I will try to explain what they are doing and why. And some of it is quite valid, I have to admit, sorry. And some of it is so absolutely wrong that we have to do something about it. And, well, this is... They really look into everything electronic everywhere, every second, all over the planet. It's staggering. And I'm quite angry. And I'm... Well, they break trust. They have attacked internet. And I don't think that, is, that it is right. They do mass unwarranted surveillance, which they said they would never do. So even you, if you have nothing done wrong, everything is recorded just in case and stored. And they will decide if they prosecute you or not. And you have no weapons to do anything back. You are just thrown in jail or worse. Well. Um, so this is what superficially now is going on in the world. Maybe you can wake up a little bit. Uh, this is uh, important. And uh, also on other platforms, everybody talks about internet governance, for God's sake. And, and as if the governors, governments have to do anything about internet, they never did. And now suddenly they say, we have to control that. It's a chaos. I say, what? Chaos? Where's the chaos? Yeah, yeah, for them it's a chaos and it's a very new. The NSA generals have been very late in recognizing internet and the social media, etc., and all this stuff which goes on. They thought nobody in his right mind would use Twitter to discuss terroristic attacks, well, they do. <laughs> so they, they said, we don't have to look at internet, it's for geeks. And Well, the generals were the only ones who didn't 
use internet apparently. So they said, well, we, if we listen into voice and get some, yeah, the metadata, you know, metadata is who is talking to whom, at what moment and where, and a lot of other things, which is even more interesting is what, in what they say. Yeah, tomor tomorrow we, we will uh, uh, go on a balloon flight. Well, it can mean a completely different thing. So the content of conversation is maybe fascinating, but who is talking to who and when and at what? Because even in criminal circuits, they sometimes have a very short telephone call to the guy who's going to pay for the, for the murder. And then they have to say, I'm, I, I have him in, in, in my scope, shall I shoot him or not? So th there is somebody always very briefly contacted. So they have to look at patterns, they have to look at what's happening and who is, how is it organized? And is it unlikely what is happening? Now, um, so if they say, oh, it's only metadata and we don't listen in, well, by the way, they do, they do store content and they can extract words and meanings out of conversations. And they have been very active in trying to find the meaning in meetings, for instance. Who is in this room and are they a potential threat, maybe? Well, I definitely, I definitely think so. Well, this is hard to read for you, but I will briefly sketch it. I had no time to make a bigger drawing. I have to... Every intelligent system, even amoebe, little beasts in the water, cells, brains of people, organizations, whatever, have a kind of structure where they have on one side very many sensors, input, and on the other side, they have actuators where they, they take action on reality. And in the first layer, there are several layers there where we can, of course, understand that they, they have to combine certain things. And, uh, but the big question is, what happens in the center? Now, in the case of intelligent services, they have to get information from an enormous amount of sources and they have to correlate it, they have to extract patterns and then correlate it with patterns they have seen before. And they have to extract certain totally new patterns which are like fish swimming in the other direction, if you look at it, even the the sign of our Netherlands intelligence service, they look at fish who swim against the stream. And there you have to watch them because something is going on. It's either nuts, or like me, or there is, he knows something that nobody else knows yet. So confirmation and exceptions. And there's of course also a second system which is for, from certain, pa per, uh, certain patterns, you have to take direct action. In the literature about brain construction, you have the fast and slow memory, or the fast and slow execution. So this is learning. You learn new patterns, and you can then use them to, uh, to find them or you have certain things which go directly. If you burn yourself on a candle, it is not brought here, it's already, your arm is already reacting. So that is very, because otherwise you should think, hey, this candle is rather warm, mm, what shall we do? Yeah, so that's, that's not working. That, so in evolution, there are some direct actions. Now, you can learn about this much more, this is theoretic, but uh, I come back to it. Why, and everybody is so angry about this listening in, about this tapping of fiber optic cables, 
where you can get the, uh, the lines between the Google centers. It's in all kinds of places where nobody expected them. They just l tap everything. And we thought, well, maybe there's too much data. Yeah, it is too much data. They have special submarines to cut cables. And sometimes they cut them on another place so that people think there's a cable break. And then put on a tap. And they need another cable to bring out the data. So they usually do it in places where fiber optic cross each other. So in, on my website you see a chart of the fiber optic cables on the seabed. And you can probably expect that they do something there. There were very curious outages in the mid Middle East, in the Indian Ocean, people thought, and several at the same date. So people said, hmm, what's going on? It's very strange that they break in two or three places at the same time. Now you know why. So, and it is an amount of data so enormous. So why is that necessary? Now, the quick answer is, and to make, to not to use too much time. It is like if you shine a light beam on something. Light. Now I tested it before that it is it's removable. So it is scattered in all directions. Light, you, you can see in every position, you see, can see the same scattering. And the same applies to information. If you do something, it spreads over tiny bits in all kinds of messages or twitters or repeaters of people who... It, it just spreads around. So if you want to know what this thing is, you have to focus, you have to have a lens to focus this into an image. Yeah? And then you get a two-dimensional, three-dimensional image of what is there. We have such thing in our head. We don't look with our eyes. It's watery balls. I mean, with a couple of millions of sensors. The lens is in our head. Yeah, it's not Aryan lens, but it's, it, we, have, we have a lens in our head to focus the information and extract the information out of it and to get a clear picture. And if you want a better picture from all those sources, you have to do an enormous calculation to, to get this information out. You have it's, it's a, f a number of steps. The first step is orthogonal orthogonalization. You extract axes which are square to each other with different attributes. They, they are, agno are agnostic to each other. I have to be a little bit mathematical now. It's an orthogonal transform is performed. And after that you have in the transformed field you only have for correlation, you only have to do a multiplication. Normally, correlation or matching, because you want to match things you expected with what comes in, you have to. Correlation is that you calculate it several times and shift it and then see as if it, ah, it clicks. That is an enormous amount of, of activity. And if you first orthogonalize, if you make an orthogonal transform, then you have a kind of pre-calculation done according to certain axes which are square. Well, it's a bit technical, but you can handle that. I think maybe it, I should explain more in detail, but that is what happens within the NSA. And what they constructed was such a correlation engine where data from an enormous amount of sources were correlated. And then they could, they, the output, they told me, 
I talked to Mr. Drake and Mr. Binney, and uh, you can see films of Mr. Binney, who was the mathematician of that organization. The output were patterns. Also in our brains we work with patterns, we don't work with data, we work with patterns. So the artificial intelligence activities really ran aground and they have restarted things using patterns in time, like audio or in place, like pictures. And then they could extract certain patterns which were show dangerous situations for terrorist attacks. But then the generals of the NSA said, no, 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 that's not enough. We have to store everything because this still is under construction and it takes a lot of work. So instead of filtering and throwing away the rest, which I can understand, and even with a number of sources, as if you have more and more sources, you get better information out of it. And unfortunately, that is the slogan of all bureaucratic organizations in the world. We need more data, and then if we don't get more data, we cannot rule or control this situation. Give us more data. When you give more data to your boss, he said, oh, can't you extract something out of that first? I mean, I, I don't want to read all. Yeah, I said, you, you wanted all the data, right? So the, it is a, it's a slogan with, that they have to know everything in real time. Otherwise, they cannot give any leadership bullshit. And it's even further wrong, but okay. So the proposal was, and they had tested it to, to get this stream going and then extract, hey, a couple of people doing certain things. We can zoom into them and then make them targets. I mean, in information sense, not in shooting, but and then we can see if what they are going to do together with information from the field and all kinds of other things. And I said, that's, no, that's not enough. We, uh, we, we, don't, we want everything and we will store it for, for years and years. So later, we, when we have found things, we can get maybe more out of it. And well, the same thing happened in the Spanish uh, Empire, the Habsburgs. In Madrid, there's the Escorial, and in the cellar, or in the in the downstairs of the castle, they have about a mile of documents from the uh, 80 years war with the Netherlands. And all the priests collected information about the Netherlands, and it didn't save them. I mean, they they had 400 years of decline. And they thought, if we register everything, we can turn the tide. Same thing with the Stasi. In Berlin, they had, I think, 20 miles of documents about every citizen. And all the neighbors had collected things from their, each other, even certain smells. So they could use it with dogs to get to find them. It's, really absurd. It's a kind of, yeah, we have to know everything. It didn't save them and it's foolish. So what went wrong? Well, total surveillance, which is maybe not necessary, but well, if they insist, let them do it, but not store everything and keep it and then they use it now for other, other purposes. They uh, use it for law enforcement. There are cases now, now from the lawyers I know that in certain instances they want to arrest some, somebody and they give, secretly give data to the FBI and they construct, they manufacture a case against you. Yeah? And the sources are unknown, it, was, it is no, not told to the judge. And you have no reply to that, you have no answer to it. You, they process you until you are in jail. 
So that's a serious crime. You have no possibility to fight such a thing. So it is function creep. And um, yeah, they now start to suppress the population. They make people ang uh, nervous. And uh, lots and lots of other things which were not even intended to be with. Them. And the real reason, and then I'm nearly finished, is we have a big, much bigger problem in the world that hier hierarchical organizations with the boss of Dilbert at the top, ra rather clever man, not, yeah? With too many levels of management below that, it is very slowly information is brought upwards, only good news. The news is not reliable, endless meetings, filtering, and only instructions downwards. And they, it was maybe a way of, of society or businesses, and even from armies, they couldn't inform the people down, down there. They had no time and means to tell them everything. They, they couldn't transfer the overview of what they saw in the top. But now they can. Now we can. And even the, if there's a big, uh, uh, what is it? your big brother, the little brothers can look upwards just as well. And we don't need such an enormous layer of hierarchies anymore. Middle management. It doesn't scale. It's vulnerable. If the, that is removed, it, there's no, no uh, leadership anymore. So it's, it's a very dangerous thing to do that. It's outdated. Well, people in the Kremlin think they can still do that. And they, they just remove people who don't agree with them. That's, that's old-fashioned. And a lot of other things go wrong then. In your head, you have a model about the, what you see. I mean, if you, you don't start anew every morning, you have something, a, a whole set of things you have learned. And in fact, if you change something in reality, you change it in the model, as well as in reality. And those two are compared, and if they don't agree, you say, hey, my model is prob probably wrong, we should change the model. Well, I hope so. Unfortunately, usually people confirm what they thought they saw. You can only see what you expect and you filter out all kinds of other things, so it is a really a correlation where a lot of other things are irrelevant as long as it locks on each other. And after a while, you, there are so many exceptions that you have to change the model. It's more clever that you zoom in to things which not, do not fit. That's what I said, this, besides confirmation, also, the real exceptions are, are the, the outliers, or the black swans, are the real inter interesting people. But this is normally what happens. And there is one step behind it. Oh yeah, the, the other point is, some people are so impressed by their mental model that they don't change the model, but they change reality <laughs> if it doesn't fit. Then you are in trouble. Then they start shooting people who don't fit in the model. Yeah. <laughs> then that happened several times in history that they put those people in a separate compound. It's called concentration camp, and they want to get rid of them because they don't. We had such a wonderful new, wonderful model. It was so clean. Yeah, cleaning. The fascists have this idea of a wonderful, all. Oh, no, yeah. I will not go into it, but they just throw away all exceptions. It's stupid, yeah. So that is creating major amounts of killing, and we shouldn't accept that. The model should be changed, we should learn. Now, 
Well, this is a model which doesn't appear, so I can skip that. Oh yeah, it's coming, yeah. Well, this is, I, this is what I said, you have pictures and words which are even integrated. This is the human brain, con consisting of 100 billions of neurons and 100 trillion synapses. So, well, there's, it's a little bit more connected than internet right now, but we're working on it. Yeah? So maybe we can together form a better brain. And we have to make such a brain work with very many different angles of view connected into a network. I said that yesterday and the day before, I think, in, in like a, a big lens. I told you a lens. It's on the net. I will skip this. And yeah, they even start now to shoot at their own people. Uh, and even cameras are not allowed. So even cameramen are say, they say to them, don't shoot. Yeah? It's, uh, and in Hong Kong, they have done surprisingly uh, very brave things. I will not go into that right now. We will have to form something like a flock of birds. We will have to build collective intelligence, not with central control in nation states, but with distributed control. It is possible. An ant hill. Is there a top ant? No. In a beehive, is there a top bee? No. They take collective uh, decisions. And everybody said that it's going to be an enormous chaos. Yeah, well, maybe it is a collect enormous chaos, but maybe that is necessary. It works. It, it looks rather organized, such as. Well, I will skip this. This is the pattern. It is a, a real fractal, which is within, in my opinion, in our brain. It is to do that orthogonal transform and correlation. It is the Cooley Tucky algorithm, which is the fast Fourier transform, is in it. Yeah, I have to stop. Okay. But you can look that up. And, well, this is, uh, yeah, I had one thing here which I have to show, and then I'm finished. Sorry. It will look... <laughs> huh? This is a film in slow motion of lightning. Did you see what happened? First exploration, and then one path, it's BAM! Yeah? Several times so it, we first, we have explored and then suddenly we will have breakthroughs and maybe your company will be on such a lightning path and there's no stopping that. Thank you very much. <laughs>